Good evening, race fans, and welcome back to the 2022 Midwest Sim Racing Association Rapid Fire Pizza Nationals. Today, we are at Texas Motor Speedway, where these open setup Xfinity drivers are going to go around and around for 157 laps. As always, I'm your host, James East, with Team Goon Squad Broadcasting, bringing the action 1080p 60 frames a second. As right now, we're waiting on a few more drivers to wait, make their way out onto the grid. Following a few last-minute notes from Race Control, it's going to be Jeffrey Meyer starting in the top spot, Mike Howerton starting second, Brent Wall starting third, Barry Stevens starting fourth, John Midget starting fifth, Travis Manning starting sixth, then we've got Kenny Meadows starting seventh, Colby Baber starting eighth, Matt Knight starting ninth, Evan Longacre starting tenth, Robert Norfleet eleventh on the grid, Chad Ginnigsman starting 12th. We're going to cycle it back to Timothy Davis starting 13th. James Duke starting 14th. Let's see. We've also got Robert Cook starting 15th. Robbie, excuse me, Bobby Harmon starting 16th. Diego Villabo starting 17th. Braxton DeWeese starting 18th. Derek Whitford starting 19th. Scott Stevens starting 20th. Matthew Dyer starting 21st. John Binder starting 22nd. Julio Villabos Jr. starting 23rd. Chris Noble starting 24th. And then cycling back for the final time, Kyle Mullering starting 25th, Greg Newsom 26th, Richard Malugani starting 27th, Phil Dolph starting 28th, and Billy Fitzgerald starting 29th. I've got to say, I think this is the biggest grid I've seen so far for the Rapid Fire Pizza National. So good to see so many drivers coming out on a Thursday night, having a great time with friends and competitors. And as always, thank you to Rapid Fire Pizza coming on board as the title sponsor for the MSRA Nationals. Couldn't do it without those guys as well as Old School Ninjas, a supporting sponsor. Helping support the league, the drivers, and the broadcast alike. Now we do have a planned stage break on lap 50 here tonight. Or we'll re-rack the field and try it once more. Let's see what's going to happen with Meyer and Howerton on the front row. Howerton picked up the big win just last week, so he's got some momentum. A carry forward in the area, 51. Ford Mustang, pace car is in. All right, we've got something going on in the start. Not quite sure what was going on the inside line there, but on Jeffrey Meyer with a big launch. Howerton quickly goes the outside line. Looks like Brent Wall looking to make his way up the inside line as well. So Howerton and Wall, two forwards trying to chase down Jeffrey Meyer. Chevrolet in the top spot. The field all but sorted out as Kenny Meadows trying to make some moves to the 96 machine. He's riding the inside line side by side with Travis Manning in the 18. Always great watching how hard these open setup drivers will push. Now, varying strategies here tonight for the Midwest Sim Racing Association. Some drivers set up for long run pace. Some guys looking more for short run speed as it looked like that was Manny with a big moment. The 18 machine and a little bit loose there out of two. And Meadows has the fastest lap of the race. Let's see if anybody else can best a 32.69 this time by. Yes, they do. Everybody's getting down to the low 30s very, very quickly. Meyer and Howerton both with 30.31s. As we continue watching a heated battle for fourth, it's Manning, Midget, Meadows all in the mix. They're about a quarter of a second back from Brent Wall's number six machine. about fourth to sixth place here. Really though, the whole field single file as Meyer, Howerton, and Wall continue to stretch their legs out front. 
Meyer, that number 50 Chevrolet, he's about a half second up over Howerton. Howerton a half second ahead of Wall. Be interesting to see, does anybody take some big jabs and move, try and move forward here? A little bit further back in the field, things are still pretty exciting. They get with a very big field today. That's Harmon, Diego Villalobos, and Julio Villalobos Jr. in a tight three-way battle for 18th. Right behind them, Chris Noble, Derek Whitford, Matt Dyer, Richard Mualagani, Greg Newsom. Everybody jockeying for position here. Only six laps in, and just inside the top 20, it is mighty exciting. Looks like we're gonna get to some three wide action there. Oh, that's Noble and Dyer side by side, fighting for 21st. It looks like maybe Whitford. No, that was Dyer, the number two machine. Had a couple wheels in the grass there. And is that the three wide action we were looking for? They're getting mighty close to it. Everybody still sliding around. Now for the drivers that are set up for a long run speed here in Texas, it's gonna take them a while before the car really tightens up their liking. And it can be Mighty hard to hold on to in the opening laps. As Noble in the 53, it looks like he was giving a very slight bump to Whitford. Whitford tracking down Diego Villabos. A little bit further ahead though, to Scott Stevens. He has James Duke right there with him, as well as Robert Cook in the 64 Toyota. And it looks like we have a battle for third unfolding. Brent Wall, Travis Manning. Getting ready to go at it, look at that. Looks like Manning gonna slide up the inside line. Will he get cleared on the backstretch for third? It looks like he will. And now Brent Wall will have to settle for fourth, just nine laps in. See, does Manning keep the charge and try and track down Howerton, who's a half second ahead here in the 51 machine. Manning up three spots early on, as it looks like our hard charger of the night so far. Braxton Deweese in the number eight Chevrolet, he is running 11th on track. And he's got Robert Norfleet in his sights, as well as Barry Stevens, as he continues his charge. Across the track, just speaking up, no pun intended. Vince Duke, Bobby Harmon battling for 18th, as well as Matthew Dyer looking to get a nose in. The number two machine this is just inside the top 20. As Duke and Harmon side by side through one and two, Dyer can't find an opening to squeeze by. He looks to the inside. Will he have the drive though? No, quickly hops back in the draft of Harmon as Duke bails out of it here very aggressively. Diego Villalobos getting hung up behind him. Oh, Villalobos with a big moment there. That's gonna allow James Duke a chance to pass back by in the 76 machine. And 
So far, things nice and clean, right? As I say that, though, Noble gets tagged by Fitzgerald. And it's gonna be a big crash. Around goes Noble in the 53 machine. I'm trying to see who else. Fitzgerald tied up in that one, I believe. Bill Dolph, Chris Noble. And that'll bring out the first caution of the night. As we take a look at the instant replay, that's Fitzgerald in the 22 machine up high. Chris Noble on the inside in the 53. Can't quite call what happens here. Let's try and get a different camera angle. It's just two cars trying to occupy the same space. It looked like maybe Fitzgerald was coming down as Noble came up. But then keep an eye out for the 84 of Kyle Mullering. He's going to get tagged in this one as well. A hard impact to the side of Billy Fitzgerald. And unfortunately, Fitzgerald in the danger zone. Pivots back up into the track as the crash keeps happening ahead. And that was the 66 of Bill Dolph heavily involved. Poor Noble and Mullering still crashing down the back stretch here at Texas. A very, very violent hit. And unfortunately, no fast repairs. I think their night is just about over. But we will try and re rack them here. Our first caution of the night. It'll be Jeffrey Meyer, Mike Howardson on the front row. Now, my question is, will we see any of these drivers opt to come down pit road knowing that the stage break is on lap 50 here tonight at Texas? Still a long way for them to go. Again, Meyer and Howerton on the front row. Manning and Wall, your second row. Midget, Meadows, your third row. Drivers wait behind our iRacing safety car. But the only drivers that really opted to come down pit road. Actually, there's a fair amount. From about 18th place back, a few drivers opted to come in on lap 15 to maybe get off cycle here. Maybe make some fresh changes to the car to try and get things dialed in. Maybe not happy with what they were finding so far.
The pace car should be in this time by. We'll try it once more after a quick early caution. Kind of throw a wrench into things. Normally it's long green flag runs are fairly expected here for the rapid fire pizza nationals. Race car getting ready to make its way in. It'll be Meyer and that number 50 Chevrolet setting the pace. Howerton was maintained about a half distance, a half second distance behind Meyer for the duration of that run. A very long time under caution here in Texas. Race car is in. Let's try it again here at Texas. Can we get to the lap 50 stage break without more controversy? Barney, our flagman, throws the green flag. And away we go once more. Meyer with a spectacular launch. But look at Travis Manning and the number 18 machine quickly taking up the second place spot right behind Brent Wall. Things are getting excited as well. So we can battling for fifth place spot. Deweese now up 13 spots very early on. And he's looking to make it 14 as he slots alongside the number six of Wall. No issues there. And up front, the battle for the lead unfolds between Meyer and Manning. Really letting that car hang loose there. You can see the back right really starting to step out as he rotates the car, but seems like it's going well for him as he's very quickly put a 7 tenth gap over Travis Manning. And we've got a caution out again once more. And let's take a look and see where that may have been from. Well, it looks like it's going to be Derek Whitford in the number 44. Let's see what happens. Oh, gets a light tap from the Aussie. Matt Knight goes around and almost kept it off the wall. But unfortunately, the long green, fly, uh, green flag run that could have been will be short-lived as Whitford will be the next guy having to come down pit road to repair that machine. Go back under eye pacing conditions once more for Jeffrey Meyer. Travis Manning showing second. Braxton DeWeese somehow is slotted back to fourth. No, oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm reading that backwards. So Manning up four spots, now second. Howard's in third. DeWeese is up 14 positions in the number eight machine. While Brent Wall rounds out the top five. This is our second caution of the night. Coming out on lap 19, excuse me, 20. Not quite halfway to the stage break. Be happening on lap 50 here tonight. See Derek Whitford limping it down to pit road, the number 44 machine.
Kyle Mullering, Billy Fitzgerald, and Pitt Road for extended stays. Looks like Bill Dolph and the 66 machine has opted to send it back to the virtual hauler for the night. He'll be done and out. Once again, it'll be Meyer in the very front spot, but Travis Manning will be joining him on the front row. Howerton, DeWeese making up your second row. Ball and Midget, your third and final row, at least for the top six. He's gonna put us very, very close to the halfway mark. I'm curious to see what Braxton DeWeese is gonna be able to do as he's been extremely quick, really moving up the sands. Again, our hard charger up 14 spots so far tonight. And here we go, Barney, our flagman, putting back in the work with the green flag. Fire still up front, but again, keep an eye on Manning, that number 18 machine, as he will be duking out for uh, with Howardson now in the second spot. Howardson looking the inside line, and he's gonna try and carry a little bit more momentum down the back stretch. As Meyer pulls a 3 10 gap early on. Now, I believe Manning preferred the inside line just earlier in the run. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out, but no, he gets clear of Howerton, so he can pick his line now. As Manning, Howerton, and Deweese run nose to tail. 
Will they be able to catch up to Jeffrey Myers number 50 machine because Meyer has been extremely quick in the early short races. Looks like Braxton DeWeese had a big blink in the number eight, looks like a four out of him. Manning closing the gap now to Meyer. Howerton still has a bunch of pressure from Braxton DeWeese, who's still charging forward. As it looks like DeWeese looking for another spot here, gonna work his way up into third. Absolutely sending it into turn one, less than 22 laps left to go for the stage break. And still some very hard racing out of the guys. So it's Meyer, Manny, DeWeese, your current top three. As Manny still putting the pressure on Meyer. You may see a battle for the lead here unfold as yes, they're linked up nose to tail. Manny looks at the inside line through one. Side by side, coming out of two. Manning shows ahead by a tenth of a second. Will he be able to? Yes, he does. Sliding up in front of Meyer, a new race leader to Travis Manning. Manning had short run pace. He's only got 20 laps left to go before the stage break. If he is a short run driver, things are going to be looking out very, very well for him. Braxton DeWeese has moved up into second. Jeffrey Meyer now third as he falls back the running order. And keep an eye out as well. Further back in the field, Matthew Dyer in the number two machine as he makes a big pass on John Midget. He came in on lap 15 and I believe took four fresh tires and a tank of gas. So he's got some of the freshest rubber just outside the top five. And he's gonna look to the inside line of Brett Wallen if he can work his way up in the fifth. And now both Dyer and DeWeese up 16 positions so far here tonight. So again, big moves to be made. As up front, Braxton DeWeese has made the move all the way to the front, taking the spot over from Travis Manning, the number 18 machine. Now it's gonna be interesting to see how this shakes out. Not a ton of laps left here before the stage caution comes out on lap 50. I think DeWeese having any problems here, absolutely ripping in the number eight Chevrolet, but to give Manning this credit, who's also up four spots, keeping their race leader within four tenths of a second rather consistently. But if we go a little bit further back, things are still getting dicey across the field, as that's gonna be Timothy Davis, Bob Harmon battling back and forth to 12th as they go side by side. 
That's Scott Stevens just ahead of them in the 55 machine running 11. And then Matthew Dyer has taken over the third place spot. So pretty intense racing all the way around as now James Duke has joined the fray in the 76 machine. And it looks like Derek Whitford in the 44 wants to get in on this as well. Whitford who had that big incident early on and coming out with a surprising amount of pace here after that incident. Things are getting heated here as Derek Whitford keeps crawling back up stands and Bobby Harmon trying to track down John Midget. And let's go even further ahead. Mike Howardson, oh, excuse me, it's going to be further back now. It's going to be Kenny Meadows has pressure from Colby Baber. Baber looks at the inside line, makes it stick on a three right behind them. That's Norfleet Wall side by side. Drivers who are inside the top 10 trying to squeeze out just a few more spots if they can. And going back up front, Matthew Dyer with a race lead over Braxton DeWeese. Dyer, who came in on lap 15, taking four fresh tires, may have been a smart play as if things keep going the way they're going, barring any sort of cautions here, which we've definitely seen before, he may be in a good spot to try and bring home the stage win. Dyer has quickly put a six-tenth gap over DeWeese. Further back, checking on Braxton Luis, who's up those 16 positions here. Gonna be interested to see, does anything, anybody I should say, have anything left in the tank for Matthew Dyer, who is really stretching his legs in the Ford Mustang up 20 positions so far here tonight at Texas. A little bit further back in the field, still have some action though, Jeffrey Meyer, Mike Howardson, Kobe Baber. Looking like it might be a three car battle for just inside the top five as Baber looks at the inside line of Howardson. Aver, another driver, he came in a lap 22 and we believe took four fresh tires. Working his way just inside that top five. Every little point matters here at the Rapid Fire Pizza Nationals.
Faber continues to crawl up the standings with just four laps remaining. He may be able to squeeze out a top three here. He's made his way around Meyer. Now will he be able to catch up to Travis Manning, who's been very quick all race long. He's got seven tenths and just a few short laps to try and make that happen. It's gonna be tough. Watching the number 10 Toyota of Colby Baber intently trying to catch up to Manny. It'll just be two laps left. He's already caught down to about three tenths behind Manning, eight tenths back from Braxton Luis running second. the battle for third before the stage ends. Will we see Baber make a big move here? Got just a little bit of time left. I believe the caution is thrown once the last driver makes their way past the start finish line. Here comes Faber, the number 10. Looks to the inside line of Manning through three and four. And it looks like he's gonna barely get third here. as now the caution comes out to signify our stage break. Before the stage, it's gonna be Matthew Dyer, Braxton Deweese, Colby Baber, your top three, Travis Manning, Jeffrey Meyer rounds off the top five, and you've got Mike Howerton, Robert Norfleet, Brent Wall, Scott Stevens, and Derek Whitford, the top 10 at the completion of the stage. We're expecting to see just about everybody come down pit road. Barney throws the yellow flag. And then we will re-rack him and get ready to send him out for the rest of this event. Again, 157 laps here tonight in Texas. as everybody comes down pit road. Now, I think Derek Whitford's gonna come down pit road. He was my only thought of a maybe of opting to stay out. But it looks like the entire field down pit road. I believe that's Chad Gunnixman making his way around for the lucky dog.
Everybody in and out, taking four fresh Goodyears, a full tank of gas. It is currently a standing yellow here in Texas. We will wait one more time following our iRacing safety car. Now I'm curious to see what type of green flag runs we can get out from the guys. We haven't seen any green flag pit stops tonight. That's usually the norm in the opening stage. What is not the norm is too early cautions for these drivers. Race car will be in this time by. It's Dyer and Deweese on the front row. Baber and Manning, your second row. Meyer and Howerton, your third row. As the pace car comes in. And away we go. The green flag flies here in Texas. Dyer with a great watch. Deweese still trying to make something happen on the outside line. Will he make it work against the number 10 of Baber? It looks like he does, carrying all sorts of momentum and trying to make it a two for one as here comes Luis. I thought he's about to rip around Dyer there. Yes, he does, he three and four. Riding that middle groove, not having any issues so far. There's some big moves happening inside the top five. Here comes Travis Manning again, and the number 18 machine works his way around Baber. And ooh, nearly avoids tag in the back of Dyer, heading to one. Dyer goes in a little bit deep as well, and that's allowed him to catch back up to Braxton Deweese. But we've got 99 laps left to go. But let's see, I'm curious to see, are we gonna see a green flag stop here tonight? As we had two very early cautions interrupt the flow of today's main event.
It's showing Diego Villalobos went off track in the 43 machine. Able to get it collected though and get back out there, so no caution. As the battle inside the top five continues on, Jeffrey Meyer, Colby Baber, Mike Howards, and Robert Norfleet. Brent Wall, these are all guys we're used to being up front each and every week. Now battling very, very hard just inside the top five. That is allowing Deweese, Dyer, and Manning, your top three, to get about a half second breakaway. As we check back in with Deweese running first, Dyer second, Manning third. I wonder if these three are going to start dicing it up a little bit because that would allow the field behind them to very rapidly close the distance. Battle is what they're gonna do as Manning slots up along the inside line of Dyer, making the second place pass nice and easy. Dyer, still our hard charger out on track. He's up 18 spots. Your race leader, Braxton DeWeese, is up 17 positions so far tonight. Let's see, Deweese. He had a brilliant move early on tonight, and he is continuing to make it happen here. Up six positions, Travis Manning, your race leader though, gonna put that number eight behind him and see what he can do out front. 63 laps in, we've already seen several lead changes so far tonight. Couple of relatively big incidents. And now we get to see Will that long green flag run come to fruition. I, again, I say it every week, I'm a huge fan watching green flag runs. It allows the drivers to really change things up on strategy and maybe try and beat somebody while they're not necessarily on the track using parts. This is equally important as the driver's skill, but Braxton Luis with another big blink. Hopefully he doesn't lose connection because we've seen that happen before. has pulled a four-tenth gap over DeWeese. DeWeese still has Dyer linked up right behind him. A little bit further back in the field, let's check out the battle for 12th. As Matt Knight, Barry Stevens, Kenny Meadows go three wide here. Oh my. Everybody able to make it down the back stretch, nice and easy, no issues, but still three wide into three. Goes Stevens. I think that's going to be Knight, Meadows, and yes, yeah, Stevens. Absolute great racing. This is the battle for 12th, ladies and gentlemen. It's Knight in the 25, Meadows in the 96, and Barry Stevens in the 78 machine. Let's go a little bit further back up front. Dyer still nipping at the back of Deweese. So this is interesting, Deweese and Dyer still swapping back and forth here. Dyer takes over the second place spot. He's up 19 positions. Looks like Deweese starting to very slowly fall back here on pace. 
We're about 16 laps of green flag racing. Well, let's call it about 14 laps, counting the caution laps. Under green flag conditions, and Deleese starting to very slowly fall towards the back. Travis Manning to pull almost a 1.2 second advantage over Matthew Dyer. Dyer last time by was just about a tenth faster than Deweese. But I think it may start stacking up here as Robert Norfley pulling his way up to third as well as Jeff Meyer, Mike Howardson, Colby Baber. And now Howardson and Meyer are gonna go side by side through one and two. to DeWeese, who may be very barely hanging on to the tail of Matthew Dyer. There's Norfleet number 56 Ford Mustang, sponsored by Texaco. Behind him, that three-pack trying to pull him in. Now, Norfleet's about a half second back from DeWeese, so I think just very barely outside the draft of these Xfinity cars. Last time by, Norfolk DeWeese ran identical lap times. It'll be interesting to see what it is as they cross the line here. Again, just about everybody inside the top five running identical lap times. All 31 point, very low 31.4s or high 31.3s, give or take a few hundreds, either way you call it. It'll be lap 79, signifies the halfway mark here today. And it looks like Norfleet, though, starting to close the gap to Deweese. He was just about two tenths faster last time by and has squarely caught the draft of that number eight machine. know what the fuel run out of these drivers is gonna be here tonight. But what we do know is Norfleet is starting to catch up to Deweese over this green flag run. Will he be able to make a pass before they have to come down pit road now? I would imagine the fuel limit will somewhere be around lap 100 is the next stop we're expecting to see out of these drivers. I've yet to see a stage break where drivers were not able to complete it under, on fuel at least, for green flag runs.
Still a quarter of a second separating Deweese and Norfleet in the battle for third. Norfleet just been the slightest bit faster each lap over that number eight Chevrolet in front of them. Your hard charger remains Matthew Dyer in second. But Travis Manning, your race leader, up five spots from where he started today. two tenths off the back of Deweese. I wonder if Norfleet trying to make a pass here. Maybe doing a bit of fuel saving over the duration of the run if he feels like he has good pace and can maybe gain some ground with track position. That could very well pay off for the 56. He's still got about a six tenth buffer between himself and Mike Howard. Now it's called a half second between Norfleet and Howerton running fourth and fifth. As Howerton has favored Side up right behind him in the number 10 Toyota. Timothy Davis in the 92 Ford. He's come down pit road for a very early green flag stop. I wonder if he's going for some sort of undercut, perhaps. I can't imagine he is, but that would leave him with an 80 some odd green flag run out till the end. Out of the 29 drivers that register for tonight, at least three are most of certainly done for the night. Kyle Mulring, Bill Dolph, Billy Fitzgerald, all back to the virtual hauler. Chris Noble in the 53. He's been in pit road for just that 26 minutes now. And now Timothy Davis in the number 92 machine. He's gonna be in there for a while. He's been in a stall for 44 seconds. Not sure if he had some sort of mechanical or has opted to call it a night here. As Norfleet staying right behind Deweese. Deweese with a big lag. Norfleet shows up inside him. Not considered a bump and run if the other guy is not there at the time, but the field's gonna scatter behind us. Here comes Howardson to try and get around the number eight machine. What a massive moment between the two. Norfleet had no idea where DeWeese's number eight machine was gonna return at. And thankfully that didn't go worse as that's gonna put Norfleet up inside the top three. And Howardson and Baber have rapidly closed the gap. Timothy Davis is back out on track. As things are mighty hectic here around the 17th spot. Going back to Norfleet. He's got Deweese, Howerton, and Baber right there with him, but Deweese still having massive internet woes. I wonder if that's gonna maybe make Deweese a little bit tougher to pass after they saw that massive moment between the number eight of Deweese and the 56 of Norfleet. He 
You know who's liking it though is Travis Mann, your race leader. He's the second ahead of Matthew Dyer. Dyer two seconds ahead of Robert Norfleet in third. Field starting to get a little bit more spread out here. Manning just clicking off laps in the number 18 machine. And the field just marching along here. There's Dyer in the background. Three, three quarters of a second back from your race leader. I don't think until your race leader Manning starts to battle traffic. Our flagman watching on. Still plenty of laps left to go though. I'm curious to see when we're gonna see some green flag stops here tonight. As Travis Manning just charging along, looks like Dyer closing the gap slightly. Still hanging around that three quarters of a second mark. But just ahead, that's the traffic that Manning's gonna have to face here soon as he continues pushing forward. Through three and four, it's Dyer losing time behind him. About a second now back from your race leader. But I think Manning's gonna be an interesting spot here. That's always a tough spot to be in, especially in Texas, when drivers have been running very diverse lines over the track. Some drivers committing down low, some others were happy in that middle groove, but when you got lap traffic to play with, Makes it very difficult to predict where everybody's gonna be at. Especially his tough spot for your race leader Manning. He knows if he waits too long to get through traffic, that's gonna allow Matthew Dyer to really close the gap. Conversely, if he pushes too hard too early, puts that number 18 machine in a little bit of danger, almost needless danger. Timothy Davis has taken a tow back to pit road. He had some sort of issue in the 92 Ford Mustang. about three seconds between Manning and he faces traffic. I think that's James Duke in the 76 machine, just ahead of the number 18 as they cross the start finish line here at Texas. Drivers down a lap under green flag race conditions. Manning blistering fast in the Camaro. That is the 76 of James Duke just ahead. Running 23rd on track. And he 
knows the race leader right behind him now. Now I'm not sure, oh no, terrible timing, Duke into the wall. Oh my goodness, and Travis Manning barely got through that one. And I don't think others are gonna be as fortunate. Bobby Baber going the wrong way, Matthew Dyer might have been tied up in that one. Let's take a look and see what just happened. We're watching James Duke coming out of four, gets loose in the 76 machine. But look how exciting this gets. That's the race leader, Travis Manning, right behind. Who's going to take evasive action as Duke chases across the track. He knows that Manning's there on his left. Runs back into the wall to avoid tagging the race leader. A heavy, heavy impact for the 76. And let's see who else may get involved. There's Matthew Dyer careening past an excellent save. And now Colby Baber going to lock it up and drift around. Great save from the top three. And that will bring out once again another caution. So that will bring out yet again another caution. But Manning's got to be happy. He's looking clean on that one. As we will roll out the iRacing safety car. And Manning will lead the field back down pit road for what could be the final time here this evening. Uh, again, I would imagine, I think, with a little bit over 50 laps left to go, about 58 laps left to go, I think just about everybody here is going to opt for four fresh tires to try and bring them home to the end. Now, what I think, I think they can run just about all the way. It'll be interesting to see how this one pans out. We're gonna see if Manning's still gonna be the first car out of pit road. He takes four fresh tires, a tank of gas, and yes, it's gonna be Manning, Dyer, Faber, Norfleet, Meadows, your top five for this restart. This will be our third caution of the evening. Let's see, it's been a bit of a wild night. Two cautions early on before the stage break, and now this, the Lab 96 shenanigans, as it will be further known as. And again, I think the leaders just have to be so extremely happy to get through that one relatively unscathed, because that could have spelled absolute disaster for Travis Manning, Matthew Dyer, Colby Baber, all Again, just so incredibly close to having a terrible night very, very quickly. We're getting them stacked up double file behind our iRacing safety car.
Let's get ready to see what's going to happen. It's going to be Manning and Dyer on the front row setting the stage. Both these drivers have been so incredibly quick here tonight. Pace car is in. Barney gets ready. And the green flag flies once more in Texas. Benny with a spectacular launch. Baber's gonna have his hands full though with Matthew Dyer, Robert Norfleet, Kenny Meadows, Jeff Meyer, Brent Wall. All in this opening gaggle as it looked like Baber got a little bit loose there on the number 10 Toyota. And he quickly pulls a 4 10th advantage right behind Baber. Norfleet and Dyer side by side in the battle for third. Norfleet comes out on top in the 56 machine so far. Dyer slots back into fourth. But here comes Kenny Meadows as well in the 96 machine. Takes a peek the inside line of Dyer. Dyer closes the door and you can see the number two machine grab a little bit too much apron. And gets all sorts of loose around goes Dyer but somehow keeps it pointing the right direction. And that will put the field back under yellow flag conditions. My oh my, what a save from Dyer. Let's take a quick look at that one. But here's Matthew Dyer, the number two machine, gets loose, starts to swap. Can't believe he didn't spin back around the track. Actually saves it. But so very grateful he didn't go bouncing back up into traffic because that almost got out of control very, very quickly for the number two machine. That will bring the yellow flag out once more. So a very quick start after that lap 96 caution. Try this again once more with Manning and now Baber on the front row. Norfleet Meadows, your second row. Meyer and Wall will be your third row. Dyer, after the big moment, will be starting 14th for this restart. Let's try this again, a very early caution. It's such a spectacular save from Dyer. I can't 
believe how close and exciting that just got. I'm sure Dyer doesn't want to hear that as he's listening in on this, but if you're going to have an incident, make sure it's on camera and then try and keep it off of the wall. Be one more lap to get him formed up double file. And we will try and see if these drivers can bring us home green till the end. And here we go once more, Manning with a massive launch. Keep an eye out on Norfleet in the Texaco back 56 machine. He looks to the inside line, as well as Jeffrey Meyer making some big moves here as well. And number 50, Chevrolet. Manning with a massive launch, though Norfleet trying to work his way up towards the front as Meadows and Meyer continue going side by side. Every time these drivers have a chance to cool the tires down, drastically changing the char characteristics of these cars. As it's Manny, Faber, Norfleet, Meadows, Meyer, your current top five. Forty-eight laps left to go for these drivers. Manny with a six-tenth advantage over second place. The field looks to be pretty happy going single file first through about eight. As Manny, the number 18 machine, just putting his head down, hitting the marks, extending the gap to three quarters of a second. Now, once that freight train behind him gets a little bit built up, it could be a different story. But right now, he's got clean track ahead of behind and more importantly, clean air on the nose of that Chevrolet. The battle for second starting to get even more heated as Manning stretches his legs to nine tenths. Norfleet Meadows trying to get up there and battle the eight, the, the number 10 machine of Colby to take over second place. I don't think Colby's gonna make it easy here. And I think Colby's maybe set up for a longer run pace. Trying to get things working as Manning just putting down the hammer he immediately, trying to put as much distance on the rest of the field as he possibly can. He has built it up over a second to this three car battle for third. It's Baber, Norfleet, Meadows all in the mix here.
A little bit further back to Brent Wall. He's got John Midget behind him. Jeffrey Meyer, Mike Howerton flopping back and forth for the seventh place spot. The field getting a little bit more strung out, kind of in different packs of cars here. As we continue watching the three car battle for second, all the while you're racing your Manning, still extending that gap now to 1.2 seconds over the rest of the field. Looks like the number 10 built up a little bit of gap. A quarter of a second over Norfleet. Norfleet still has Meadows breathing down his neck here. Meadows in the gold and white 96. Norfleet in the Texaco 56. Trying to catch up to Babers number 10, the predominantly white Toyota. A very diverse top five here as well. It's a Chevrolet out front, a Toyota second. And then Ford runs third, fourth, and fifth late into the race of the Midwest Sim Racing Association rapid-fired Pizza National Series. Here comes Norfleet trying to take over the second place spot, working the inside groove. Meadows gonna try and follow suit in the number 96 as well. And it's a drag race down the back stretch. This entire time though, Manning, your race leader, Still extending the gap, now 1.8 seconds as Colby has a massive blink in the number 10 machine. The field scatters away from him. We saw that incident earlier between DeWeese and that almost involved the wreck that Norfleet was involved in. So I think Norfleet seen that going on in the rear view mirror going, all right, let's stay away from this one. Now, if you're just watching, this is the battle for second out on track. Less than seven tenths separating second through fifth as Manning continues a dominant charge up front. Kenny Meadows trying to catch up to Norfleet. Norfleet running almost identical lap times as your race leader Manning. I wonder if these guys are burning up too much tire early on in the run. They've got 30, 39 laps left to go in this race. But somehow, some way, Manning still extending his gap. Last time by a 30.79, Norfleet with a 30.91. So another tenth to the advantage of Manning. And now Norfleet's gonna have pressure from Kenny Meadows in the 96 machine. The two Fords working together up towards the front. Intently watching the battle for second, but let's go check in on Travis Manning in the number 18 machine. Not having any issues so far, and still extending that gap now 2.3 seconds over the rest of the field. 
He's running just shy of a tenth faster than anybody else right behind him. Has built up that gap to 2.4 seconds to Norfleet. Norfleet Meadows linked up, not getting away from each other yet. They built up about a half second over Colby Baber in the number 10. But Baber staying linked up, catching that draft, not one to work his way too far towards the back. Heading back to Brent Wall, another massive pack here from fifth place back. It looks to be about five drivers within a second of each other. As John Midget works the inside line against Wall. Mike Howerton, Braxton DeWeese, Jeffrey Meyer, Barry Stevens all in the fray as well here. Things are getting heated as it looked like that was Braxton DeWeese. All sorts of out of shape in the number eight Chevrolet. He's worked his way back up to eighth. Ten spots from where he originally started here tonight, but a big moment there. That's gonna allow Midget, Howerton, and Wall a bit of a chance of a breakaway. As Barry Stevens, Jeffrey Meyer put on some side-by-side -side shenanigans. And up front, Kenny Meadows has made the pass for second over Robert Norfleet. So it's going to be Manning, Meadows, and Norfleet. Now your top three. Let's see what's going to happen here. The Wee still having those internet woes as Howerton makes his way around that number eight machine. And every time that happens, the field stacks up slightly. Now Norfleet's going to have some pressure from Baber and the number 10 Toyota Camry. Colby looking the inside line of Robert through the tri oval. I think he may have it here into one. as Manning and Meadows continue to stretch that gap even further in first and second. Norfleet now having to settle for fourth. Maybe burn up the tires a little bit too much. Let's see how Meadows maintains tire. Now he's still about 2.4 seconds back from your race leader, Travis Manning. Checking in on Manning, the number 18 machine, not having any problems out here tonight. Looking very, very quick in the 18 machine, having very dominant long run speed.
go a little bit further back in the field. Brit's still a bit frantic. Now Julio Villalobos Jr., Matthew Dyer. Battling side by side. Robert Cook, Barry Stevens, Richard Malugani all in the fray. Looks like Dyer makes the pass on Villalobos Jr. And we're gonna start the countdown. 26 laps left to go here. Side by side action. Jeffrey Meyer, Chad Gunasmink, Diego Villabos, Evan Longacre side by side in a battle for 20. It's just great racing all across the track here today. That's Matthew Dyer, John Midget, Julio Villabos Jr. A three car battle for eight going on. As well as Robert Cook wanted to join the 64. So let's see what's gonna happen here. 24 laps left to go and the guy's still getting very, very dicey. Book trying to make a move on the 29 machine right behind them, Malugani. Stevens also getting a little bit closer. Book works his way up inside the top 10. Malugani tries to follow suit here. Two laps left to go. Kenny Meadows has whittled down the gap to Manning now to 1.6 seconds. Faber closing the gap as well. 20 laps left to go. Will Kenny Meadows have enough time under these green flag conditions to slowly pull up to the number 18 machine? Will Travis Manning find himself battling too much with traffic? Laps rapidly clicking off. Now it's 1.3 seconds between Manny and Meadows. Last time by, Meadows is gaining about a tenth per lap. At this rate, if he can hold the momentum, it is likely he will catch up to Travis Manny.
looks like though Manning found some pace or Meadows had a bit of a bobble as the gap now extends once more to 1.5 seconds. It's gonna be 16 laps left to go here at the line. Very interesting to see how this is gonna shake out. Not a lot of time left for these guys to make big charges. As we do still have some nice tight battles out on track. Malugani leads Robert Cook by two cents of a second. If we go back to Barry Stevens, he's side by side with Midget in the 29 machine. Oh, well, looks like Stevens backs out of it there. Bobby Harmon's gonna make his way around the 73. Love the biggest grid we've had so far this season. Great racing all across the track here tonight. As, oh my, these guys are racing hard. I'm not sure if that was Harmon we saw getting a little bit loose out of two. But so far it seems like Texas has been a little bit slippery for these drivers. Four car battle for the 12th place spot. A little bit further back to Barry Stevens, who's right in the middle of this with Binder, Midget, and Harmon just ahead of these few. It looks like Matt Knight closing the gap as well in the 25 machine. But a beautiful green flag run from these drivers as we see Stevens try to work the inside line once more. He's gotten around Binder. Is right behind them. Knight and Winnixman right in tow. What's going on right ahead? Binder getting dangerously close to the 29 Toyota looking for an opening. The driver's getting a little bit frantic as it's 12 laps left to go here. And we've got a massive battle unfolding. Well, what's going to happen? A lot of drivers fight for not a lot of real estate. We've got Binder, Midget, Stevens, Knight. Winningsman all in the tow here. This is the closest battle we have out on track. And with five cars, it is absolutely frantic out there. Well, we've got something going on. Matt Knight's falling off the board, and yes, he finds himself in the outside wall. Not sure what happened to the Australian 25. Let's take a quick look and see what may have happened as he gets it spun back around. We're checking in on Matt Knight, the number 25 machine. Seeing where his night got ended a little bit early after so much hard work this evening. He's on the inside line. Uh, he was coming up, I think, there. And unfortunately gets sent around, absolutely drilling the wall. I think that was the 78 of Barry Stevens. And unfortunately, Matt Knight, after so much hard work, We'll be going back to the hauler empty-handed. What a great run, though, out of these guys. And unfortunately, Matt Knight will have to be watching the rest of it from the hot dog stand here in Texas. That will put us back into eye-pacing conditions. And this is not what Travis Manning wanted to see. He was so fast on the green flag run. Now all of a sudden, things are gonna get decided with that late race caution. Who's gonna come down pit road here and offer tires? Who's gonna gamble hard and stay out? They've been out on track for just about 50 laps now. Surely they're gonna come down pit road.
as expected, Travis Manning gonna lead the field down pit road, but for these drivers that have been so fast on the long green flag run, now what's gonna happen is it's gonna be a sprint race shootout till the end here. Now I believe it's gonna be about six laps left to go after this caution is through. Oh, and it's a mad dash out of pit road. It's gonna be Manning, Norfleet, Baber, Meadows, Howerton, your top five here. Malugani opts for a two tire stop, it looks like. In and out of his pit stall in less than 9.9 .9 seconds. That's gonna put him up into fifth for a final chance at a podium. Let's try this again, the final, what could be the final shootout of the night. A late race caution, throwing a big wrench into the plans of so many talented long run drivers. It's Travis Manning, Robert Norfleet on the front row, Colby Baber, Kenny Meadows, your second row. Richard Malogani, Braxton DeWeese, working his way back up to the third row here at Texas. Will we get a standard finish or are we going to go into green white checker conditions here tonight Here we go for what could be the final time. It's going to be six laps left to go as they cross the line. The green flag flies courtesy of Barney and away goes Travis Manning. And it is getting wildly frantic very, very quickly here. 
everybody sending it as hard as they can for what quickly turned into a final sprint race of the evening. Travis Manning already up front, holding on to that lead by three tenths of a second. Faber right there in tow, Norfolk running third, Meadows fourth, and Howerton has worked his way back inside the top five. Now, I guess the one saving grace with some of these cautions is some of these drivers tied up in early race incidents suddenly get a chance at redemption here at Texas. As some drivers not having that look, Brent Wall has fallen off the standings. Dropping way down towards the back. I wonder if he tagged a wall. Again, no pun intended there. As we watch Manning continue his charge up front. He's got four laps left to go to try and make it happen. A three-tenth advantage over the number 10 Toyota. A seven-tenth advantage over the number 56 Ford piloted by Norfleet. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Manning still with a comfortable 4-10th advantage. And that number 18 Chevrolet. Now the battle for second, third, and fourth, not as, not as relaxing as Manning's currently run up front. Norfleet has Meadows breathing down his heels here. Will anybody be able to catch up to Travis Manning as the white flag is out? I don't think they're gonna be able to catch up to Travis Manning. The battle here is gonna be for second between Baber, Norfleet, and Meadows. Who's gonna risk it all here? Will we see a big drive coming out of four? Norfleet takes a peek the outside. Baber locks down the inside. It's gonna be Travis Manning, Colby Baber, Robert Norfleet, bringing it home here for Texas. What a great race out of that number eight team machine. A very well-deserved victory. Yeah, and it's gonna be Travis Manning, Colby Baber, Robert Norfley, your top three. That's my time for now in the booth. We're gonna pass it over to our podium team, as always, on behalf of the Rapid Fire Pizza Group, Old School Ninjas, as well as the Midwest Sim Racing Association. My name's James East with Tomb Goom Squad. Thank you all so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the next one. Hey guys, this is Mike Howerton here with Rapid Fired Pizza, MSAR Racing League, and we are down in the pits right now to, talk, to interview our top three drivers on the podium tonight. We're going to start with the third place driver, Robert Norfleet. Robert, man, how was the race tonight? Were you able to keep your car pretty stable throughout the whole run? Yeah, we had a pretty good setup. Uh, it was a little tight, and then uh, as the race went on, Got a little bit loose, and um, I just couldn't stay with the lead pack there. So uh, pit stop there, the last pit stop, made up two positions in the pits and ended up falling the third. So pretty good race. Yeah, and, you know, I was out on the track, and I, you know, I was in and out of the top five most of the night, and I, and, and I think I passed you once, you passed me, and but uh, there in the first part of the run. But now after that last caution and i don't mean the last caution is in the one like 10 laps before the end of the race i mean the caution about halfway through that second stage um it seemed like you got a little faster did you make some pit stop adjustments or in your car uh that made you a bit faster there in that second half of the of the of the uh second stage yeah we we'll tried to loosen it up uh in the center and it worked for the first 30 40 laps because i think actually by the end of that run you were starting to run me uh, reel me in pretty good yeah, and uh, so uh, you guys, uh, you, know, you, you had a pretty good showing here tonight. You got third place. 
Um, we had a week off. Did that affect uh, any anything with you guys and the team? Did you guys give you extra time to work on the set uh, or practice here, or kind of you know was the week off really a non-factor for you guys? Uh, for the post, for the most part, it was a non-factor. If anything, probably got a little rusty. <laughs> So uh, what are you guys, what are you looking forward to? What do you got planned going into next week? Uh, just practice a lot and uh, hopefully uh, hit the setup a little better and a little faster so we can run with you guys. Well, you did more than run with us. You, uh, you, beat, you beat me and all but two other people in the field tonight, man. So congratulations on that. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, kind of little luck played my way, so I'll take it. Awesome. Hey, Robert, is there anything, anything else on your mind, anything you want to add before we, before we close out tonight with you? I would just like to thank everyone at the Rapid Fire uh, Pizza, or the Rapid Fire Pizza series here and uh, all the work you guys do to put on the league. It's a fun series. Awesome. There you guys go. That's Robert Nortfleet, your third, third place finisher tonight here uh, in virtual Texas. In our rapid fired pizza sponsored National Series League. And we are moving on, and we're going to uh, talk now to the second place finisher. Second place a finisher in tonight's race is uh, Kobe Daber. And uh, Kobe, you had a real strong run tonight, um, and uh, you, your car was strong. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on, on the racing tonight and, uh, and where you finished? Yeah, it's pretty interesting uh, racing tonight. You could tell everybody had a little bit of different strategy as far as their setup goes. Uh, I was I was trimmed out for the long run, so that, that's where my strength was. So on these restarts and everything, that was kind of killing me. I would drop back a little bit and have to make it up there at the end. Unfortunately, didn't have quite enough what, what it took there with that last, last caution. But, yeah, overall, I was pretty happy with the car, um, just wishing we had a little bit less cautions. But you can't control those things. Toby, uh, there uh, seems like also uh, at the beginning of the race you got faster as the race went on. Um, what kind of what kind of things were you doing, uh, either with your driving or in the pits that was helping you out? Because it just seems like, like I said, the, the longer the race went on, the faster you got. Yeah, it's just uh, for me, it's just being more comfortable with the setup and the limits and the track conditions that you have during the race. Uh, your practice sessions are always a little bit different than the real race results, especially if you're, you know, not used to running around some of these fast guys that are up here and uh, on top of the group. Uh, so for me, you know, setup changes are pretty pretty easy. I just mainly had to mess with tape the entire night. Like I said, my car was pretty pretty dialed in for where I wanted it to be, just a few minor adjustments, and mainly the, the speed gain there at the end was just being more comfortable pushing it. Toby, do you feel like this gives uh, you and your team some momentum moving into next week? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I proved myself pretty well on the intermediate tracks, so hopefully I can uh, work my way out of like the, the second and third places that I'm going to get and then finally get a win here in this series. Awesome, man. You got anything else you want to add, anything you want to say before we, uh, before we close out with you tonight? Yeah, I just got to thank the sponsor, SimRacingZone.com, for the great uh, Toyota Super tonight. And, of course, Rapid Fire Pizza, It's Cool Ninjas, for sponsoring the MSRA series tonight and all the guys that run it. Uh, it's a great series to be a part of. And then Goon Squad, of course, for broadcasting. I always enjoy the, the quality broadcast that they put on for us. Absolutely. Goon Squad always puts on a great broadcast. Look forward to watching those. And I know the viewers who watch the league appreciate that as well. Kobe, thank you very much, man, and congratulations on your second place finish tonight. Folks, the winner of the race tonight, he is here with us right now. And I just want to congratulate Travis Manning on his win tonight. Travis, how does it feel? I think this is your first win here in the MSRA Rapid Fire Pizza League. How does it feel to win the race tonight? Oh, man, it's, um, it's awesome. You know, it, car, car was good. It was uh, great. Racing was great. You know, everything just kind of it was one of those races where everything worked out the way I uh, needed it to. Um, we didn't have the long run car that everybody else had. Uh, we were great 20 laps, and then uh, – 
between 20 to 30, we were even 30 past that. We were, uh, we were in trouble. And, uh, thankfully cautions came out the way, uh, the way I needed it to tonight. Um, they couldn't have worked out any more perfect there at the end too. So, uh, you know, just everything sometimes saying sometimes are the bug, sometimes are the windshield. Today we were the windshield. I'm glad to be the windshield. So, Travis, uh, when that last caution came out there with less than 10 to go or right around 10 to go, uh, were you in the lead at that point? Yeah. Uh, when the caution came out, I was in the lead. Um, well, I, I believe it was uh, uh, Braxton maybe that he was just – he was hawking me down uh, about a tenth of lap. So, it's, uh, I, was, I was in trouble. I wasn't going to be the leader if the green uh, stayed out. So it sounds like it sounds like that uh, late caution really played a a role in the finish of the race then for you. Uh, absolutely, I was begging for it, and uh, when it came out, it was just a massive sigh of relief. I was doing everything I could to keep the car up front the best I could, but the right rear tire was just melted at that point. So yeah, when the caution came out, it was just sigh of relief, and uh, it was exactly what we needed. And you know when you know when building setups and, and, and on a team where you're working on sets and stuff, you know th- this kind of strategy comes into play. Just the idea that you know do you build a car and give up some short run speed, you know, for better long run, with the idea that hey, if a late caution comes out, it may be a little tough, uh, or do you build you know hoping the race goes all the way, you know, and there's a big, you know, real long run to the end and you finish strong. And I know that there's there's teams that try to guess you know what race is going to be like. I know teams that run the Road to Pro series um, a lot of times they're guessing a little bit about, you know, what, what split they're going to be in and what the racing's going to be like. Um, did, did, you, did you know, any of that go into your thinking when you guys were, you know, building up tonight with your setup for the night's race um, or just kind of work out the way it worked out? Uh, I think it was more just the way it worked out. Um, it, it, if, if I were to build a short run car, I think about 35 laps is where I would want it to start cliffing off 20 with a little uh, short for my taste. <laughs> But uh, thankfully, the the 20 laps that it was together, it was um, it was an absolute rocket ship. So uh, it was just kind of how it worked out tonight. Um, you know, thankfully the cautions worked out the way they worked, or otherwise, uh, I I don't know if I'd be here speaking to you. But uh, yeah, I would have loved the car to have been better long run. It definitely would have put a little less stress on me. It was uh, quite the handful after about 30 laps. So uh, yeah, I just got lucky tonight. Honestly, just just how it all worked out, and um, it just everything fell in line the way. Uh, I needed it too tonight, and uh, it's just luck, man. Definitely got lucky tonight. Yeah, well, you know, we come out, Travis, each and every week, and, and we race against the same guys, and competition's really stiff here in this league, um, a lot of tight racing, and, uh, you know, a, a lot high skill level, and there's a lot of guys at the same skill level. And so, you know, like, I think that no matter what, uh, no matter what, a win kind of validates the fact that, yeah, I can run with everybody here. And, uh, you know, is that kind of how you feel tonight, this being your first win? You're like, hey, this means this means I, I belong right here at the top of, of the league. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, anytime you can pull off a win anywhere on, uh, on, on iRacing itself, it's so hard to win here. Uh, there's, there's so many talented drivers, so many talented teams out there. Uh, Anytime you can come through with a win, uh, especially, I mean, the field here, we had 20-plus cars in the field, and they were all fast. So it's, uh, yeah, anytime you can get a win here, it's it's definitely, you know, validating for you as a confidence booster. I know it's a huge confidence boost for me. I'm still still learning this beat car. Um, I love the car, just still learning it. So to come in here uh, with guys that run this car, you know, week in, week out, and, you know, be, be there and hold pace with them, I mean, definitely. And then, you know, got lucky and ended up winning the thing, so... Yeah, absolutely, and hopefully we can keep this momentum and take it forward. Uh, that would that would be great. Absolutely, congratulations on the night's win, and best of luck next week. And Travis, anything, any last thing you want to say? Anybody you want to thank here tonight before we uh, close out this broadcast? Absolutely. Um, you know, thank the league, everyone that um, put it on. You know, uh, Evan. Um, I know. Uh, sure but he owns the league so you know thanks to those guys uh thanks to you, you guys um broadcasting it you know league uh you know, rapid fire pizza old school ninjas for uh being the series sponsor we had a uh, you know, goon squad thank you guys for putting the race on for us um then i've got uh don wheaton chevrolet on my chevrolet camaro this evening uh sim racing edge bruising cues a bruisey racewear racer apparel um and frontline esports man if it wasn't for all that stuff combined, you know, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. So thank you all of them. Really appreciate it. 
Well, Travis, man, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed uh, tonight and, and the feeling of the win. And, uh, and it continues into next week for you. Have a good showing next week as well. And, uh, you know, I, I, I appreciate Rapid Fire Pizza and, and the sponsors of the league and the old school ninjas, the goon squad for the broadcast. And, you know, if, if check it out. You know, I'd never, before this league, I'd never heard of Rapid Fire Pizza. But I want to tell you guys, I, I started looking around, all of a sudden, bam, there's one in my town. So you guys never know if there's a Rapid Fire Pizza in your town. So go on, online, check to see where the, the uh, nearest Rapid Fire Pizza is, and give it a try. They are doing great sponsoring this league, and we really appreciate it. And I'm sure they would appreciate your business as well. For myself, Mike Howard, and everybody here at the MSRA Rapid Fire Pizza National League uh, and all the drivers, we appreciate you all being with us. And as always, we will see you in the next one.